So thank you very much for coming to this session. So this is a technical uh, and design session, actually, on the next UI toolkit. Um, so I assume this is the first time everybody's hearing about Next. Um, and so, uh, so what Next is is actually a user experience, a UI software toolkit so that makes it really easy for you to build web apps for networking. Um, I am going to be doing the speaking. So I'm Susie. I'm the CTO of Networked Experiences. Um, actually, my team is running DevNet, and we hope you guys are enjoying this program. Uh, two other things that I have going on in my group is this augmented collaboration innovation right here, Spring Roll. It's an innovation project that we're doing. And another one is this Next UI Toolkit. Um, I will be giving the, the talk, but actually the authors of the Next UI Toolkit are sitting right here. So these are uh, five of my team members. So <laughs> this is uh, Abu and Ming and Stacy and Mofi and Mars. And so they are Cracker Jack programmers and designers. Um, I have a language advantage, so I'm representing for them. They have the technical and design advantage, so uh, as we go through different areas and there's different questions, they're going to jump in as well. So, uh, so, so today we'll be presenting next. So in terms of uh, what is next, uh, and I apologize for some of the video issues that we're having here. So as opposed as for, for, for what is next, basically, you know, many of you are working on networking. And when you work on networks, then there's kind of an experience that you have today with operating the network. Um, I'll be honest, it's hard. <laughs> and you know when you look at a product and, or even a place or a restaurant, you're like, this place was designed in the 80s. <laughs> you know, this application was designed in 1990s. Right? You can kind of tell when you see something. When you look at how you configure networks, kind of log into each machine, SSH into each device, use a command line interface, you can say that's like 80s, right? <laughs> and it was, right? And again, you know, networks are amazing in the way that we do things. There's a lot of very manual things. And clearly where we're going with SDN and ACI and APIC really gets us to a new place. So we're doing a lot of work on the platforms for software-defined networking, for ACI, for managing by policy, and things like that. But the thing that we've paid attention to in addition to that is what does the user interface look like, right? So what's the user experience? So there's many different things that you want to do to actually like visualize topologies, to actually take actions on what's going on in the network. And so these are things that our team is working on. And we actually work very closely with the various product teams. So with APIC EM, so our APIC Enterprise module, you might have seen it in different places. It has a network topology that you view, and you can kind of zoom in and zoom out and hover over and get information. That's actually built with the Next Toolkit. So my team works very closely with the, Next, uh, with the APIC EM team. Actually, Ming, I think you pulled an all-nighter to get APIC EM running in the NOC yeah. together with the APIC EM team. And what you'll see tomorrow is you'll see the visualizations in the Cisco Live NOC um, kind of viewing that network. That will be about uh, 1,000 devices there. So you can see uh, it will be a very um, good range there. Um, all the devices will be aggregated. And you will do not see all the devices, but you can hear a hierarchy of the devices. That will be, make sense to, to see that on the NOC. Maybe you can see it tomorrow. So take a look at that tomorrow. Uh, in addition, there's a WAN, WAN automation engine that's used in our kind of service provider space. So that actually also uses our, uh, our next UI toolkit to do some of the visualization there. Um, in addition, we have Open Daylight, and there's different apps being written on top of Open Daylight, and they're written uh, by Next as well, So uh, the UI portion. Um, and then we have uh, interactions with the Prime team, so with Prime UX, and basically on kind of aligning the design patterns and things like that. So lots of work that's going on. Let me show you a little video. It just kind of quickly runs through a lot of the places that we are using Next today. Okay, so one second. I'm going to go full screen here. Uh oh. You don't see anything there, right? Okay, let me try again. Is 
Actually, I think they're doing something here. Let me just try to let me just try to reset this again. Apologize. Okay. Sorry, it's going to be a t it's going to take a minute here to show some of these applications. Actually, I lost the PowerPoint as well. Um, so, uh, so, so, so in terms of next, so there's a number of products that it's being used in. Um, so, in addition, again, you'll see it in the NOC. Now, let me just talk about some of the problems that we face when using Next, right? And so, when or when you're trying to view networks. So, one question: How many? So, how many of you are operating networks today? A right, number of you guys. About how many devices are in that network? Thousands, huh? Thousands. Any others? How many? How many devices are in your network? Thousands. Um, so, so it's actually very common to have thousands of devices in the network. Even just here for Cisco Live, we have over a thousand devices. Uh, we have even more than that, right? And that's to build up a temporary network. And you guys have real worldwide networks. We have customers who have tens of thousands of networks. Um, if you actually include some of the wireless access points and things like that, it gets even larger as all of that stuff happens. So then we have to think about some of the types of problems that you have in visualizing that information. And questions that we have for you are, how do you want to look at that information? You don't want to really look at 1,000 nodes on one screen at one time, but you want to actually start to aggregate you know, different types of information so you can see them in different ways. So that's what the next toolkit lets us do as we actually go back and forth so that we can actually look at different types of information. And we give you the tools because we've worked on building the tools to let you do it. Um, but uh, we don't want you to have to go through everything that we went through in order to do that. I think we have a problem somewhere else. And I apologize. My presentation is very visual for you to see <laughs> what's going on. I'm, I'm not sure what happened, so, so apologies. Let's just... Give it another minute here. <laughs> it was working for a little bit, right? Yes, questions? OK, so, and that's a good question. So question is, when will Next be available um, you know, for the libraries and everything like that? So to be honest, this is the first time that we're actually allowing others outside of Cisco to use Next. Um, and so it's because we're having the DevNet forum, we wanted to show you a tool that's useful to us and see if it's interesting to you. Um, if you guys decide that it's something that would be useful for you, give us that feedback and let us know, and then we'll try to make a plan for when we can make it available for you. You can certainly use it in the hackathon, you can learn about it in the learning labs, and if you tell us this is interesting, we want to use it more, then we'll go about um, making it available. So we do have that strategic intent. It looks interesting, so you're interested? OK. <laughs> so we'll keep that as one possibility there, definitely. Yes? OK. Uh, then you can, uh, so the question was, uh, you know, so, so Action Pack, Live Action is also interested in having this. Um, then what you can do is if you're interested in getting more information about it, then uh, g give us your email addresses. Ah, give us your email addresses, and then what we'll do is make sure to get you on a mailer. We'll actually open up a forum on the DevNet community for next. Actually, that's probably the best place, and we'll start a discussion forum there. That would be great. OK, we have video again. I'm not going to try to go full screen this time. That put boogeymen in the system. I can go full screen? <laughs> OK. All right, so let me show you, let me show you this. I'm not going to go full screen. <laughs> um, let me show you the video. Okay, so this actually shows you a number of applications that we're using Next on. It's pro it goes a little bit quickly, but it actually shows you different things that we've built with Next. So here we're 
viewing nodes in a service provider network. We're actually getting right into the command line interface where it matters. Let's you see what's going on in detail to look at your interfaces. Can actually uh, set your ACLs, set and configure your access control lists. You actually have templates for adding new um, access control entries. then you have the ability to go ahead and deploy these. This is actually in our uh, WAN automation engine. So it's in our service provider network. This is built on top of Keratin. And what we're doing is we have different visualizations to show uh, different topologies and the traffic going on on top of that. And so we have the ability to actually place demands in the network and query and say, hey, we want to have a new stream that goes from here to here. You make that request. And after you've queried the network, it gets you can admit that request if it says the bandwidth is available and continue to view that. So the other thing that becomes important is to do things like aggregate nodes, right? You don't want to look at all of the nodes all at once. So we have an ability to actually aggregate them and then expand them when you want. And you can also select a number of nodes as well. So these are a lot of tools that we've actually built into a toolkit. Now that we've built this in, you guys can actually use these as well. Um, and again, my team members here are the ones who've actually built all of those apps in the toolkit, so we can get a lot of detail about that here. Um, so next on the presentation, let's actually now jump into this. So basically, in terms of uh, what does next mean? So next means, uh, so next with a capital X and a little t, not a big t. Steve Jobs used it the other way. But next means user experiences embedded in the network. And so again, what we're really doing is trying to take this user experience approach to networking. Um, it's a web-based, it's an HTML5 JavaScript-based toolkit that lets you do two things. You can, first of all, write very efficient web apps. You know, so when you're actually programming a web page, like let's say you're just making a blog or creating a web page, you can use regular HTML5 and kind of basic programming. When you need to make a web-based application, that actually, you know, again, you want to kind of get, take the advantage of using a browser and HTML5 and things like that, but you want to make really more complicated interactions using JavaScript, then it becomes pretty um, difficult to write a full web application, you know, which is different from like a web page, right? So you want interactions between different screens. You want to have different methods and objects that you can program to. So, uh, so Next actually provides, you know, and actually spearheaded by Mars, a basic web application toolkit that lets you program better and more efficiently in JavaScript. So that's kind of a key part. You can actually use that part alone. But in addition, you can actually have a network topology toolkit that lets you do some of these things visually. And so these things come together where you can write really efficient web apps with the framework that we have, as well as make interesting looking topologies using the network UI toolkit portion. So there's actually different portions in there. In terms of the next UI toolkit, what are some of the advantages? So first of all, as we've been going about building this, we took a very experience-driven approach. So Stacy in the middle here, she's a designer. So Stacy's a designer, and Edwin's our designer who's been over in Spring Roll as well. We actually took a very experience-driven approach to first kind of design and think about what are the problems we're trying to solve and what kind of visualizations and things would be interesting. And then we went about building the technology to really support that. And it takes a lot of hard work to build that technology. The visual and interaction designs are really focused on building in more intuitive network experience. So again, really, we started out by talking to network operators and seeing what their pain points were, and then going about to then build a few applications that actually solve those pain points, and then extract what are the common components that we need to do to put into a UI toolkit that then can be leveraged by different applications. So we've been doing this by building different applications. It makes it easier to build network web applications. So, uh, and the whole idea of building the framework is that it can be reused, right? So if someone needs to figure out how to hover over a network node and show information or, you know, throw up a 100 node network, you don't have to reinvent how to do it. They did the hard work and now they've put it into a library so others can actually benefit from that work. Um, it actually leverages a lot of advanced programming, basic and advanced programming concepts from other languages. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, you know, since they're all kind of really expert programmers, you know, there's uh, different um, advantages for different programming, and they've actually pulled the best into that and put that into Next. Uh, the topology components, they've really provided these different topology components that you saw to build those apps that you saw. 
um, and made a rich set of APIs that allows you to do some of that as well. Um, and then it's actually pretty sustainable because we're trying to turn this into a co-development mode. You know, so, but for starters, what we'll do is look at the, the toolkit itself and see if this is useful to you guys to use. Um, you know, and then further that, we'll see how to, how to expand beyond that. So what I'm going to do is actually, oh yes, question. How do we anticipate licensing? So we're actually going to think through that. Um, but for starters, what we're trying to do is enable use. Like really what we care about is improving the network experience. So, um, so, so we'll have to work through some of that and we can work with some of you guys on it. But we're going to be more favoring getting widespread use you know, as opposed to turning it into our next billion dollar business. <laughs> so, um, uh, for the experience design, so there were actually a number of design principles that are actually built behind this. You know, kind of same thing. You see spring roll and augmented collaboration. You see different types of like applications. What you can tell by that is that's not just a lab technology prototype, it's a designed experience, right? So go and take a look at, at augmented collaboration. You can tell it was designed. Same thing here. For this, it's a designed experience. So there's a number of uh, UI design principle that has been built into it. So, and, and some of these uh, we've, we're working on achieving, and it's iterative, but these are principles that we continue to aim for. So first is the information itself is the interface. So we didn't want to show you a visual topology and then make you go to a different window to do your work and then come back and look at it again. So really our goal is to try to put you know, look at the information, show it over the visualization, and then allow you to take action into there as well. Um, in addition, we really wanted simplicity, so that when you're looking at it, you know, what's really the most important thing is not that we show everything, it's that we show things that people can understand, right? So we actually want things where we want to understand what do people need to see, and then how do we show what's more important so that you can solve the problems that you want, find what you need to see, and take action on it. So uh, we're really looking for that visual clarity. And you know, obviously, when you have folks who are looking at these monitors you know, like hours and hours on end, it actually takes a, you know, kind of a high cognitive load. So we're trying to make it simple to kind of reduce, reduce that cognitive load. Uh, in addition, uh, you know, we were looking at a kind of unique identity. So you know, we're trying to align with some of Cisco's brands for some of our things. But in addition, we're allowing customization. For the, for the look and feel so that it can actually uh, change for different efforts, and we'll show some of that. In addition, we're trying to look at wide applications. So that's why we didn't just build this for one app, so we've built it with APIC EM team, with the WAN orchestration uh, for WAN automation engine, you know, together with the open daylight apps. We're trying to actually take different use cases so that we can actually build those back together uh, and use those to inspire what's in the design and the toolkit. Um, there's a number of things within the next UI design. So first is that uh, there's a number of building blocks. So both network specific components as well as general UI controls. So you might see some uh, you know, different uh, network, U or, sorry, different general UI toolkits that let you make tables and have buttons and things like that. But obviously we're looking at network specific components as well. So how do you show routers and switches and wireless you know, controllers and things like that. So we have networking icons and so on. We're looking at a number of design patterns. You know, so something that's kind of interesting on the upper right is when you have networks, you have different layers of networks. You have your L2 network, you have your L3, you know, so you have these different layers. So we wanted to provide tools that kind of help in that. Um, we have something called situation awareness. So when you look at that visualization, the, just the animation going down here, you'll see that the labels move as you move the node. And you can manually change nodes, and then the labels will move to try to minimize the overlap. You know, sometimes you have overlap anyways, but, but we kind of adapt to that, and we've built that into the toolkit. And then we allow different styles. So you know, obviously, internally, we'll have a Cisco looking style, but we're actually also having other flavors of visual design you know, so that it can be uh, adapted a bit. So in terms of some of the different network elements, there's a number of network elements in here. So you know, one is that, first of all, what are the basics of what you need to show in a topology? So you have nodes, right? so network nodes. You have links between nodes. And another basic element is grouping these things. right? So you might have groups of nodes that you want to build up together and then be able to manipulate those as groups. So these are some of the basic uh, structures that we have within Next. In addition, when you're actually connecting up two nodes, sometimes you just want to connect them directly, but sometimes there's actually multiple interfaces and they're connected in different ways. So we actually have ways to show that, and we've actually added, you know, and allowed you to put multiple uh, links 
between two nodes. And uh, you, know, you can actually have them be straight lines, or here we have them be curved lines. Uh, and so when you have more than nine links, you don't necessarily want to show them all, right? It starts to get very thick. But then you can actually aggregate links together, like here's a bundle of you know, eight links, here's another bundle of eight, and you can start to label these things accordingly. And which you can see in the bottom here, when we have kind of 16 links put together, so you don't have to always show them all the time. Um, we have an ability to actually show uh, the path um, in the traffic. So as you're trying to show both you know, a path between two nodes here from A to B, can actually show, OK, generally the traffic is going from A to B. Or maybe you want to follow exactly hop by hop and actually show where the traffic goes. So then you can actually overlay a visual on top of the nodes. Um, by actually having those, you could actually, for example, color code those to know, hey, it's, it's red. Maybe one of the links is red, uh, is red. Maybe the others are green. You, know, you can actually show different things. You can actually change the thickness to show the capacity. So these are different things that we've actually built into that toolkit. Um, this shows the way that we've actually built it into the WAN controller where, uh, you know, with the Keratin product, which is now kind of the base of some of our WAN uh, automation engine, then they actually had a product called Mate Design and Mate Live that was using some visualizations. And this is kind of the way they wanted to show it. And here you have bi-directional traffic between links. And, you know, one way it might be green and the other direction it might be red. You know, you can kind of change the, the thickness there and things there. So we actually have built some of these things into the toolkit so you can actually visualize these things differently. You know, another thing is, you know, when you, uh, you know, one thing that's really important is how you kind of zoom in and zoom out to get more information. So obviously when you have thousand plus, you know, thousands of nodes in your network or tens of thousands, you can't want look at it all at the same time. So what you'll see is that we actually have an ability also when you have different network devices or links, you can hover over them. When you hover over them, you get different types of information that you can set and see. But in addition, when you start to zoom in closer, then you can actually start to see the interface points. right? And then as you zoom in even closer yet, here you have more interfaces, and you could start to hover over some of those interfaces and get information about the interfaces themselves. right? So some of that doesn't make sense when you're zoomed out, but when you zoom in, you can start to get different types of information, and that's pretty key. Whereas, you know, another thing is the way that you can actually, you know, generally manipulate the views. So you can actually do things like, you know, manually edit the functions and say, oh, I want to select areas and kind of move or pan them. And then you can actually do different things like zooming in and zooming out, you know, magnifying certain areas, going full screen. So these are all different controls that we've built in to this. Um, and, then, uh, and then one of them is like when you select in, you might then expand out and actually get more options for, uh, for finer control in there. Um, another really important thing is selecting objects, right? So you may want to, and this is actually used in APIC EM as well as some of the others, something that we thought was important people when they actually view their networks is that they actually want to kind of select multiple nodes and then tag them, right, and say like these nodes, these are all of my kind of uh, you know, core network routers, right? Or these ones are all the ones in, you know, in my uh, Texas uh, data center. So there's actually different things that you may want to do in how you actually group and manipulate these. So we made it important that you could actually select objects. You can click on objects to select them. You can kind of create a box around them. Or you can click and, uh, click and press control to then actually select multiple objects together. Um, another thing is basically uh, node aggregation as well as nested topologies. So you may have views where you actually want to do things like, you know, look between these links, and then you maybe do want to see what's going on outside at the different hosts and, you know, these different offices. Or maybe in some cases you actually want these things to be aggregated together and all you care about is the one link out, right? So then you can actually press on this and expand them, or you can collapse these nodes. And uh, you know, we let you choose what's uh, expanded or collapsed, and people can change this as well as you select areas and choose to, uh, to collapse them. Um, you know, for, the, for service provider networks as well as maybe others, but it may be important to view these topologies. Uh, and here shows an example using both Open Daylight with Next. And here what we've done is actually created some you know, apps on top of Open Daylight. And you know, here we're actually viewing these on top of, in this case, a world map, so a US map to actually show where some of the different uh, nodes are. 
In addition, we're doing this for enterprise networking, and as I mentioned, uh, you know, as we're working closely with the APIC EM team, and what we found is that there's actually different views that are useful for people at different times. So sometimes you might want to be stressing, uh, you know, how are things connected overall, what's happening between my kind of wide area networks, and how are they connected. Other times you may want to actually view them in a hierarchy. What's in my core, what's in my distribution, right? What's in my access networks? And so people may want to actually view them in those other ways. So we've actually built different types of views into this as well. And you can actually label things into your network and we can figure out some things automatically as well, but allow you to refine them. Um, there's things like aggregation where sometimes you might want to say, you know, I want to see how are my kind of, uh, you know, how are my uh, branch offices doing overall? You might have them grouped up or you might want to actually spread those out and you know, jump into one of these groups and say, well, let me actually expand this out. Boom, I expand it out, and then that's actually broken out to where its you know, sites are there as well. So again, this is all kind of built into the toolkit. Um, I mentioned that there's actually things like a 3D layer display, and this actually lets you kind of you know, label nodes and view them in different layers, um, as well as look at you know, L3, L2, or physical topologies and kind of drill down, like where do you have a node that does drill down and go all the way through and where there are ones that are just added. So this becomes pretty important in how you put those things together. So this is built in as well. Um, and then we're actually solving some problems like viewing ACLs. So, so it was very interesting is that, uh, you know, when we were interviewing network operators at the beginning, we're like, okay, so what's your experience with networking? You know, what do you want to see? Where are your pain points? And so people would actually be, come to us and say, oh, well, it's kind of hard to upgrade my network, you know, because I have 100% service uptime contracts and, you know, upgrading is just hard and it's really risky to do. Or, uh, you know, it's hard for me to know what's going on in my network. I want to be able to see it. There were all these pain points. And then they get past the polite part of the interview and then they're like, I hate your ACLs. I hate ACLs. And they just start, you know, those access control lists seems to, does, does anybody hate ACLs or spend a lot of time managing those? <laughs> So, uh, so those access control lists are pretty difficult for folks. So one of the first things we did was actually make an ACL viewer, right? Because you're just going through literally lines of text, right? And someone find the error in this. <laughs> That's actually what some of your jobs are, and I know it's very difficult. So we actually made it easy to view ACLs, to actually do textual searches, to bring up the right stuff up to the front, just to make it much easier than kind of logging into each device and pulling out this information. Um, in addition, we've extended this to, uh, to a, to a net, net ACL in which we can not only look at the information, but we can actually also take action, right? Or we can actually take these things, we can modify and edit them, and then deploy that change into the network. So this is kind of based on some of our um, open daylight work as well. So, uh, so we have that visualization as well. Um, in addition, you know, one thing for actually for some of these various things is we haven't thought of every single use case of things that you need to do into your network. So there might be areas where we've made a few um, apps like you know, how to deploy quality of service or policies or you know, ACLs, but maybe you have other things that you want to build as well. So something that we've built uh, is also into our WAN um, automation engine and others is this app container so that you can have something for a bandwidth on demand app or bandwidth scheduling or you know, generating traffic or going to mate design. So you can actually add different apps so that you can customize these yourself as well. Um, same thing for open daylight. So we actually have different uh, app containers for open daylight so you can you know, dive into your BGP, your ACLs, OpenFlow. So there's actually different things and this is a very extensible way that you can, again, create more visualizations on the same data uh, to show different things. Uh, this one I mentioned earlier, so this is the uh, smart label position. So, and again, this is built into the toolkit. You know, while I know a lot of people like to code and code their own stuff, you know, it might not be fun to figure out where to put the labels and have them move around. So we've done that once, so you guys can leverage that and don't have to write that from scratch. Um, also things like a smart node display. So you can see that when we were zoomed in, or now that we're zoomed out, you can actually see the icons in their entirety. But as you're zooming in, those things would just start to get in the way, and then the icons actually turn into nodes, right, that you can actually then, you know, see more things on the page. So that's actually a smart node display that determines the sizes and, and changes accordingly. 
And uh, this shows the different themes that we've added. So, you know, at first we were talking about certain Cisco look and feel that matches with Cisco branding. But in addition, people may have different visual styles that they want to put in. So we actually allow that kind of customization as well. Um, okay, so that kind of describes like, you know, kind of really fast, but it goes through a lot of our kind of design aspects and hopefully it gives you a feel for the types of things the toolkit can do. So let me try to dive into the uh, software side for the development. So first of all, and I apologize, the text is a little bit hard to read here, but uh, you know, for the next UI toolkit itself, so I told you there's two parts. So the left side is the next framework and the next framework is what makes it better for you to build web apps, right? So using a lot of advanced coding principles and to do this efficiently. The right side is the next topology, right? And the topology is, let you, is what lets you do some of the things that you saw in those pictures. Um, but both are very important and, uh, and both can be used. So over on the next framework, the thing that's really important is that it's, uh, it, it really um, you know, uh, facilitates object-oriented programming. You know, and this is, becomes a you know, very important feature to use throughout. Um, in, what, in addition, there's a model view, view model coding. And this is actually what allows you to actually, you know, take different types of objects and then bind them to different activities and events. And then, uh, and actually build your apps in a very efficient way there. There's a high performance view engine. So, uh, you know, realize that in areas like this, the way that, um, you know, you can actually look at those pretty pictures, but if it's sluggish when you use it, it's, it's dead, right? So it's really important to have you know, good, good application performance. So there's actually a high performance view engine that helps do some of those accelerations with when you're refreshing the page and so on. Um, there's real support for web applications. So again, there's a big difference between web pages and web applications. And so there's actually support to help you, you know, when something happens up here in the application, you want something down here to happen. They're not separate frames that are treated separately. It's part of a program. And so that's what we needed to bring together. And then there's also uh, JavaScript enhancement. So, you know, JavaScript is the main language that's being used here. And uh, we've been able to enhance features that make that easier to code. Over on the next topology side, it's a very network-centric design, um, been focused on the user experience. Um, you know, there's a really kind of full-featured set of topology type, you know, uh, capabilities and has a rich set of APIs on top of that. And the idea is around some of that network visualization, you know, as, a, as I've shown. The actual toolkit itself has the following architecture. So, you know, at the bottom, there's actually the JavaScript core. And that's what we talked about that has a lot of those performance enhancements and it has the next framework itself. On top of that, there's a UI core that starts to let you do some of the basic UI capabilities, basic and advanced UI capabilities uh, that's on top of there. And then on top of that is the topology component, which gets into the network specific enhancements that we've added in there. Um, it, uh, and then you can create great web apps on top of that. Now, uh, you know, at first we were kind of providing, providing our own kind of visual components look and feel, but we've actually added bootstrap support because a lot of programmers want to use bootstrap. So we have different bootstrap themes that can be used as well. So if you want to use bootstrap, you can continue to do that as well. Um, some of the concepts in terms of the next framework itself. So, you know, as I told you, there's a lot of depth in terms of the actual uh, next framework. And so, uh, so why do we need to actually create another framework, you know, on top of JavaScript? Well, you know, JavaScript is a very powerful language. It's a very flexible language, which is great. So it allows you to basically do everything. But then sometimes it's weak and it doesn't have the structure that it needs of some of the other advanced programming languages. So uh, what we needed to do was build in some of those extensions to make it more powerful there. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, web applications are becoming more complicated. So even if you get a web app in a browser, it's not just like a, you know, like a crippled view of something that's happening for real where you're just viewing it as a web page, but that is the web app. It needs to be full powered and really have all of the capabilities. You're not gonna go to a separate app for the full functionality. So those uh, web applications are being more, uh, more complicated there. Um, there's also kind of compatibility issues across different browsers. And rather than you know, needing to uh, you know, kind of fine tune all of those enhancements, we built some of that into the framework. Uh, some of the different um, concepts that we took from different advanced languages frameworks and put it, built it into our next uh, framework is basically using you know, the object-oriented programming concepts from C and C Sharp. Um, there's a magic methods concept for inheritance through Python. 
and then this model view view model concept from WPF coding. So kind of took the best of these different worlds and Mars has been working really hard to put those into JavaScript here so that you can actually get those same benefits out of JavaScript. Um, you know, if you actually look at um, the object-oriented programming in Next, it actually, um, now you can actually use very much, you know, class definition and inheritance using a static member support, built-in pub-sub mechanisms for events. Uh, you can actually have properties that have simple default values, uh, and then methods with inheritance in, uh, in overriding on top of that. So, uh, so, you know, it gets you back to basic object-oriented programming, but also in the JavaScript framework. Um, over here are the magic methods in Next, so that you can actually use things like inheritance. So, you know, so as you're actually defining the methods, you can actually take down any JavaScript um, objects and methods, as well as Next ones. So as you're building these, you can actually combine you know, Next with JavaScript and really use those together in your uh, methods and objects. And then you can override those as you need to as well. Uh, there's the different uh, you know, model view, view model uh, coding in Next. So that's something that was used originally in WPF. And it lets you actually separate the presentation layer from the business logic layer. And so uh, this was actually another uh, key area in terms of being able to you know, build in mechanisms that allow you to use this type of a coding structure um, with Next. So, uh, so that's actually built in in a very interesting way. As we get up into the Next topology component itself, um, there's a number of features for the topology. And you kind of saw it visually, but let's talk through some of the features. So, um, so first for the topology, there's a basic graph visualization and uh, interaction features, so how you actually work with the topology itself. There's actually um, multiple ways to do layouts, right? So you can use a force auto layout. We have the enterprise networking layout or a hierarchical layout. So we're actually playing with different views. And I know that even when you look at it, you oftentimes want to switch between the views as there's different things to visualize. Um, we looked at how to scale this to large network sizes. So large network scaling has been really key there. Um, so that lets you do things like aggregation of nodes, kind of an expansion, as well as progressively rendering the screen. Otherwise, you wait and try to show everything at once. It can really get bogged down. So there's a lot of accelerations that we're adding there. Um, you know, looking at paths, traffic, tunnels, and group visualization. Uh, building in the map overlay for world maps, you know, US maps, and so on. Uh, building in the interaction uh, behaviors as well as extending interfaces, so how you can do drag, zoom, hover, click, and so on. Um, and then there's a number of uh, built-in icons and the icons scale and kind of do the right thing, and then the different themes that are available in those themes, uh, as well as the tooltip manager and layout manager and the node and link extensibility. There's actually some more details here in terms of uh, you know, the actual framework itself, and the team can actually dive in with you for some of those. Um, so you can actually see the, uh, you know, the graphs, the topology, and then these are the structures that are used in the different layers where you look at groups, links, uh, link sets, nodes, node sets, and paths. So these are all important when you're building these things together. Um, and then it kind of boils down to trying to create this simple experience for then how you can create this topology. So let's say that you had a five node network that is connected in different ways. Each node has a different label on it. There's a number of links that are connecting it. You know, what you see over here on the left is some of the code that you need to actually put that together. So you create a window you know, of a certain size. You then uh, you know, configure the links. And then separately, you would have the data that actually shows the name of each node you know, and, and the title and how they're connected. And then boom, you can actually uh, initialize that topology. Um, you can actually use different things to add labels. So you can add uh, things like latitude and longitude and various things. So you can actually add these on, these properties on. So you can actually specify those as well. Uh, so you get a lot of um, ability there. And then if you want to draw paths on top of it, then you just add a path, right? So you can add a path on top of the topology, you know, on top of link one, and then, you know, and then specify the type of arrow, and then boom, you kind of throw that on top. So uh, so the team has worked actually really hard to take a lot of the things that you saw in that first uh, view with all of those applications and then turn them into a toolkit that can be used so that you guys don't have to refigure out all of that stuff. Let me show you one final uh, 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 demo video here that actually shows um, next uh, in terms of all of the capabilities here.
Okay, and this is actually showing the framework capabilities itself. We just added the curves. This is actually allowing you to edit and create your topologies visually on the fly. To edit and remove notes. And remove links as well. Great. All right. <laughs> Great, so, uh, so, so thank you very much. So, so basically what you see again here on this toolkit is that uh, um, I think you saw some of the different uh, layers that are being, being shown here. Um, so, well I think actually that pretty much, you know, we, we actually have a roadmap of, uh, you know, various things that we're actually adding. So right now we're on 0 0.7, you know, version of Next internally. And you can see that we've been like, if you start at the beginning, we've added traffic, added node sets, you know, and, enhanced topology performance, added scaling. Uh, we're looking at mobile device support and things like that. So we have a roadmap internally with which we're adding more capabilities. And uh, you know, so a lot, a lot of work has been done on this. We can actually congratulate the team for all of their hard work here. Um, but overall, that I hope gives you a feeling for next in the next UI toolkit. Um, team, do you guys have anything to add to what I said or to correct what I said? Anything else to add? Go ahead. No, I think uh, your, presentation, uh, your presentation is good to um, uh, present <laughs> us. Then I think thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so again, I'm showing uh, this team's work. Uh, do we have any other questions here from folks? Yes. Okay, so two questions. So one is, uh, is this compatible with jQuery? And, or does it conflict with different versions of jQuery? And then also, what are we doing with uh, touch screens and for iPads and things like that? I think, uh, I think jQuery is a one uh, good um, uh, UI um, JS framework there, but it is not enough for the, uh, for the network stuff there, and it does not have the, um, uh, the OOP, something like that. So uh, I think uh, maybe, uh, maybe Abu can give some more uh, details on that. Okay. Okay, 
Sure. Uh, first question is definitely you can use uh, all the third-party libraries, so we not conflict any versions of the things. And uh, the second question is uh, about the touch. Currently, we add the basic touch support, but uh, we, we have a roadmap for the next release because uh, touch screen requires some big size icons, some uh, paint, some some multiple gestures. So, at, hopefully, as the next next release, we will add the touch support.